Good evening, and uh, welcome to uh, another live stream with me, Peter Warren. Uh, sorry, Emma Bonso, we were, uh, live stream is continuing, uh, and we are running out of topics to do for uh, daily, uh, for like kind of like weekly maintenance. Um, uh, not really. Um, what we, uh, what basically happened over the last couple of days uh, since the last stream, the interview with Akiyama, is. Um, I just had to get a load of work done uh, on my own trees and things like that and I was kind of feeling the pressure of making videos and things and I thought ah oh, sod it I was just going to uh, um, just not do a stream this week um, but then I'm not going to be here on Saturday uh, I've got to take a trip to deliver a load of trees uh, and so I thought oh well this would be a good opportunity to try out um, doing some sort of pre-made um, PowerPoint presentations that I've got so you know over the last however many years of, of uh, being sort of traveling around and giving talks, demonstrations and things made up a kind of like a, a bank of, of presentations and things. And so there's been, a lot of people have been asking about sort of show him bonsai uh, and display aesthetics and things like that. So um, I figured this would be a good time to do it. Uh, so there could be a few little sort of technical issues. What I've got, I've got two computers running. The, uh, the camera is on, on, on the one with the the PowerPoint display, I've got the the, the chat and this streaming software on another one. So if I'm looking all over the place, um, then that's why. So hopefully we'll be okay, um, and we will uh, just kind of like you know it'll, it'll work through. Uh, the 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 screen will be at times just the the PowerPoint presentation uh, with me sort of talking over the top of it. Other times I'll be up in the up in the top corner. Um, so tell me kind of like. If it's really off-putting to have me there uh, talking, then then do so. Uh, if anybody does have any questions, then please uh, do put them in the chat. I won't be looking at it too much um, because obviously it's on a different screen, um, but I will try and answer them um, at some point. Okay. So what we're going to look at today is uh, kind of like the majority of it's going to be kind of like looking at the the, the history of of, of Shohin bonsai, where it came from. And how a lot of the the design, um, or particularly the display aesthetics and ideas, have sort of come into being, rather than a, okay, this is a rack and this is how you put a a, a display together. Because there's plenty of information out there um, about that type of display aesthetic and things like that, and there are a lot of kind of rules and and sort of formalities and sort of ways of doing that which there's a lot of information already out there and I can't really add like an incredible amount to it at the moment with the facilities that I have here uh, available so I'm not gonna you know just come in and, and, and just keep repeating the same thing but what I do have and what I've sort of I've always been interested in a little bit more than that is kind of like the evolution of the of, of how Shohin have come to being and how this modern way of, of displaying has has come about, so we're going to be sort of looking at that uh, more than anything else. So uh, we'll crack on with that. Let me just get this thing up uh, here. Okay, uh, so this is how it's going to be uh, with me up in the top corner here, uh, and sometimes I'll flick just to just to the, the thing. So the things that we're going to look at, as I just sort of said, um, kind of like the origins of of uh, Shohin bonsai, uh, the evolution of the aesthetics and ideas. Um, and kind of the the importance of pots. So the the, the, the one of the, the bigger differences I would say between the big trees and the smaller trees is that kind of the the importance of the of the pot with with Shohin. Obviously, with the bigger trees, it's very important. But as you'll see, like with the Shohin bonsai, uh, it becomes a, a much much more important part, um, particularly of the display and stuff like. And then uh, just look at a couple of the kind of the the famous influences uh, on Shohin bonsai. Um, so as I've said in previous streams, uh, the kind of like the Satsuki world is a world unto itself, and the, the Shohin world as well. And in Japan, there is these three sort of separate worlds of the the, the three different organisations and associations. And there is some crossover. So like we do that Venn diagram, and there's a certain amount of kind of crossover for the bigger exhibitions and such like. But there are people who specialise just in doing Shohin, and they are you know they live in their own little world they have their own kind of organizations and they have their own um, exhibitions they have their own way of doing things 
Uh, and the, basically, the, the kind of the All Japan Shohin Bonsai Association uh, is the, the the hobbyists' association. Essentially, uh, it's run by professionals, and, and the like. The head of the of the association will be um, a major professional. Uh, but it's really to to sort of promote the their their remit, the the thing that they say on the website, and their kind of like their um, the whole re- reason for being is to promote the enjoyment of making and displaying Shohin Bonsai. And that word there is very, very important. The enjoyment of making and displaying Bonsai. Uh, they organise uh, some of the major exhibitions, including the Gaffer uh which is the, the highest level showing exhibition. Uh, and at these sort of exhibitions as well, what they do is they, they, they run kind of like workshops. They do a lot of this type of thing to try and get people involved uh, in the... Um, uh, in the you know the actual practice of of, of doing it, uh, as I said, the the biggest exhibition that they run is called Gafu Ten, which is held uh, in January uh, in Kyoto, and it is like the the the, the pinnacle of the the Shohin bonsai world. Uh, the you know the the finest trees, the finest displays get put on on display there, um, and it's not just the you know, the Shohin trees, but also what we look at, what we call today as the the, the mame size or the you know, the bean sized trees. Okay. In addition to that, um, uh, there's another association which was created before the the, the amateurs association, as it were, uh, the the Shohin Kumiai, which is basically the the professionals um, union. Okay. Although it is open to a certain extent to to, to semi-professional amateurs. Um, and they're the kind of people who organise auctions, the sales areas, and such like that. Uh, and this kind of like the differentiation line between sort of semi-professional amateurs and sort of full, you know, professionals is it's a very grey area in 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 the showhim world. In the in the larger bonsai world, the normal bonsai world, should we say, it's very very obvious. Okay, but the 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 showhim world has sort of come from um very kind of uh, enthusiastic amateurs who just worked and worked and worked their way up um and eventually kind of were were able to kind of start to, to to make a living out of doing sort of show him bonsai uh and so it's always had this kind of um sort of semi professional uh element to it and so if you go to 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 any of the auctions there will be uh, a number of kind of like enthusiasts there so sort of semi-professional enthusiasts to create a lot of the material themselves, and so you'll see these people bringing in, you know, big trays of uh, material which is all identical, you know, sort of 15, 20 trees, all made the same, sort of uh, near enough. Um, and the, you know, those are the people who are very much kind of like the producers of a lot of the, the the stuff, rather than say the bigger nurseries, the professional nurseries themselves. Obviously, they do make stuff, um, but what they'll tend to do is take on a lot of the the, the things that the enthusiasts kind of like make themselves and then improve them or that you know they'll cherry pick the best pieces out and so this kind of relationship we talked about it in the in the akiyama stream as well this this relationship between the, the integral relationship between those sort of enthusiasts who are very um passionate about it and the professionals is very very close uh in the in the show world and so as a result it does also then make the the, the sort of the the buying and selling of trees a lot more difficult from a from a profit making uh, perspective as a professional um, and so it's based on, on, on quite high volumes and, and such like so you know they're, they're, that's essentially kind of like a little bit of a, an idea of how the, the world is kind of organised uh, in Japan uh, and then we'll sort of just kind of like have a, a brief sort of dip into the into the history of it and there'll be a lot of people this is this is only designed really to be a kind of this isn't a you know a university level lecture. This is just the kind of like a, an introduction to those people who don't really know a lot about Shohin Bonsai, where it's come from, and and and, and such like. Uh, those people out there may you know there'll be a lot of people out there who might sort of know a lot of this already, um, or you could sort of question you know sort, sort of some of the points. But there's generalizations made in all of the streams, okay, and some people sort of hate that. Some people. You know, they don't mind all right so there are some sort of generalizations made uh and if there's anybody out there who wants to pick me up on it then i'll be doing something far more important <coughs> but basically since kind of the photographic history of bonsai so basically going back to say like 150 years ago 
uh, began. There are some examples of Shohin bonsai, so smaller size trees, um, but not definitely not at the ratio that we sort of see today. So there were, you know, maybe like one to a hundred, whereas today, like Shohin bonsai is a much more kind of prevalent part of um, the bonsai scene. Uh, but the term sort of Shohin bonsai, so the actual kind of the characters that, that make up Shohin bonsai, literally the show means small uh, and the hin means thing. So it's a small bonsai. Uh, and that term has basically been used um, since the sort of the start of the, the modern bonsai um, scene, revolution, whatever you want to call it, which basically sort of started at the end of the 19th century. Uh, with the major revolution uh, and when bonsai became sort of practiced by a larger number of people rather than um, just a, a you know a select few aristocratic types um, although for particularly for shohin and for, for the larger trees as well the um, that kind of aristocratic background was very very important as one of the the most important figures of um, the, the shohin world um, a, a gentleman uh, called uh, Matsudaira, Count Matsudaira. Uh, he was an aristocrat from Shikoku, uh, and we'll focus on him for for a long time uh, later. Uh, but he basically kind of uh, single-handedly, in in in, the, in many ways, kind of kept uh, Shohin bonsai going, um, developed it, and also the largest uh, aspect of bonsai, and also kind of to 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 a certain extent the the farming. Um, of, of of bonsai on his native Shikoku island, um, so he was a very important person for for bonsai in general, but especially for for Shohin. And what he did, one of the reasons why he sort of did this was he was you know his 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 home was in Shikoku, which is one of the the islands in the sort of south of Japan. Uh, but as he was an aristocrat and he was a member of the House of Lords and such, you know, the upper house, uh, in he had to travel to Tokyo and live in Tokyo for a long time. This is the you know the nineteen tens twenties. 30s uh, and so obviously you know flying wasn't an option so they would go up there and spend half the year or longer up in Tokyo and so he would take seeds with him say take tr trees with him you know in a little carry bag that he had this, this uh, bamboo uh, bag and he would take them up to, to Tokyo as a reminder um, of his of his homeland of his you know of his, of his, of his native area um, and also to you know to, to enjoy the show him so the, the sort of the the, the more kind of um, well documented uh, exhibitions and such like sort of start with um, the the first Kokofuten uh, and Matadaro as we mentioned he was a he was a you know a, a big um, mover and shaker with uh, creating the the, the Kokofu, um exhibition and a lot of his ex a lot of his um, uh, trees are. Uh, exhibited so he had uh, multiple um, exhibits in some of the early ones and he had something in every single exhibition I'm not sure of every single exhibition but he had something in exhibitions even past you know after he died and his wife uh, continued to, to look after the collection we'll talk to him about later but yeah so these are the, the the kind of the original sort of types of displays and remember this is the highest level of bonsai kind of in Japan at the time so this is in 1934 um, and with my big cursor that you can see here uh, you can sort of see the the way of displaying is very sort of different to um, to, to kind of how it is now. Okay, uh, so here's some sort of close-ups of those sort of trees. But the w one big difference that we would say uh, between sort of say uh, you know you, you would look at these trees uh, and maybe think of them as being nothing much more than kind of the the club level um, the sort of level of trees. But the one thing that's very important about these is the the quality of the the, the craftsmanship in the pots is, is absolutely phenomenal uh, a lot of these pots were already antique chinese pots or they were being made especially sort of commissioned and made by some of the master craftsmen potters um and, and so it's like and so these the, the pots were of these phenomenal quality um and and, and beauty as well uh, and so from 1934 to basically kind of like modern day sort of um uh, displays it's, it's come a long long way uh, and a lot of people think of these, you know, the, these, this way of displaying, or you know, a lot of the, the bonsai traditions that we have around t sort of today, or you know, even going back sort of 10, 15 years, uh, as being as having this massive long history. But it's not actually the case. Um, a lot of the, as we sort of see, a lot of these things have, have only come into into sort of being um, sort of very, very recently. Okay. 
So the the use of this term shohin, uh, it's often kind of uh, people get uh, a um, sort of caught up on semantics and, and just, just kind of like the words that get used and the naming and things like this. And when we get into to sort of talking about suiseki and things like this, then you'll see just how passionate I feel about kind of just how unimportant that sort of classification and obsession about the, the, those things really is. Um, but in Matsudaira's um, uh, communications and in those books, we from a, from a very early period, we we, we still we, we see him using this term show here. And so basically, oh, sorry, uh, it has been it being used uh, since you know the the start of this kind of like modern bonsai period. Uh, a few other terms do sort of come up, uh, and in this magazine, um, which is uh, kind of Gardener's World basically um is called nogyo sekai the world of gardening uh it's a bonsai special so this was from 1940 uh don't mention the war um and this had a, a special on bonsai uh and these are pictures from the from the magazine uh and in this sort of general um gardening magazine they're described as uh katate mochi bonsai so bonsai that can be held in one hand um uh, and the trees that we see uh, up here is a zelkova. Um, this is uh, a winterberry, uh, and this one is an unknown um, variety. I've I've asked a lot of people about the the, the name of it, um, but nobody seems sort of to know. Um, they are essentially the, the the sizes are given, or although they're given in um, sort of the old Japanese uh, measurements, um, uh, but they're given as twenty one, nineteen, and nineteen centimeters. So they're they're pretty sort of standard. Um, sort of size uh, shohin as we would uh, sort of think about them today. Uh, as you can see, this gentleman here is, is having difficulty holding this uh, supremely heavy tree uh, up. Um, and it then goes into uh, creating this sort of different um, definition of, of what shohin bonsai are. As I said, this is just one magazine's in sort of interpretation of it. Um, and these, this is where it sort of, sort of calls them shohin. So here's the characters for shohin. So that's small, that's thing, bonsai. Um, and these are all kind of like uh, sort of about 13 centimetres tall. As I said, this is just one interpretation of, of the sizes and things like that. So if you've ever heard of any other names, you know, this is kind of like potentially where they've sort of come from. Um, so this is uh, two white pines up at the top, uh, a nishiki uh, pine, so um, cork bark black pine, uh, and then a zelkova down the bottom. Okay, so when, once we sort of see um, the the kind of the expansion of bonsai um, from the nineteen sixties, um, we start to see kind of like bonsai display becoming a little bit more kind of organised. But before that, um, there were no real kind of um, What's the word I was looking for? Gu guiding principles is written there in front of me. I was trying to find a different word. Uh, but there's, there's there's not a real kind of like uh, massive amount of thought uh, to uh, to kind of like how things are are going, even though they are um, kind of like at the highest sort of point. Um, and so the, this idea that you always have a uh, like a pine on the top of the the, the, the tree, or that you know everything's got to be an odd number of of, of um, uh, items and such like this wasn't around um, at, during this kind of like early period of, uh, of, of showing display um, and the there's also ideas about kind of um, using stands stands upon stands uh, and so this is something that uh, Matsudaira did uh, and other people you know of, of his um, his contemporaries they, they also did that uh, but this was something that later on would become ridiculed by certain other, other people in, in the bonsai world uh, and then has come kind of like back into in, into to practice. So, you know, just looking at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight objects on display. Uh, and just kind of like random orientation of, of things like this. So this is another one by um, by Matsudaira. We've got uh, bamboo and zelkova up at the top, a needle juniper here, ivy, crab apple, mountain maple, uh, an accent and then you know Japanese winterberry so this idea of the this kind of like this mountain uh, type of image uh, wasn't around sort of very early on uh, this is just to, to show that it's not just him uh, this is his uh, sort of good friend 
Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, uh, a, a gentleman called Sakai, uh, who was also a very um, well-known uh, showing bonsai enthusiast at the time. Uh, and you can sort of see, you know, directions of trees going off in all different um, uh, sort of ways. Uh, we've got um, a uh, Euonymus up at the top here, a five-needle pine coming down here, cedar, crabapple, uh, a type of willow, uh, and a couple of species that are, are unknown. Okay. Other examples of this. So the directions of trees going off randomly, you know. But as I said, the one of the, the things that is, is of the highest quality here um, that is still practiced today is the quality of the pots and the stands. So these stands that that, that, that were being used here uh, were, I've got all these pop-ups coming up on this computer, go away, uh, were, as I said, of the highest quality made by master craftsmen and some of those are still being used today, the, the pots and stands. So obviously that's kind of like the pre-war period. Um, we get into the into to, to kind of the, the you know bonsai sort of disappears during the 40s and, and 50s to a certain extent, and then once we get up into into the 1960s and 70s, uh, Japan kind of comes out of that post-war slump. Uh, it goes through the the economy booms, uh, interest levels of bonsai just sort of uh, you know get much much more uh, sort of higher. Uh, there is, um, you know, techniques become developed, professionals start to, to be able to make a living from doing bonsai, uh, and we are getting um, mass production of trees, rather than just, you know, a few enthusiasts sort of doing it in their own backyard. And, and one of the, the other things that really kind of, uh, that, that helped the, the development of bonsai just in general, but especially with Shohin, is the, the publications so magazines and stuff like that. So people were doing things, and it was getting shared, and uh, you know people from around from around Japan were able to see what was going on. Uh, and there was one magazine which was really really good, um, and uh, Mr. Kobayashi had uh, the entire series of this. It's called uh, Shizento Bonsai, so Nature and Bonsai. And this was like a really hardcore magazine. There was loads of kind of text in it. Obviously, I couldn't read it all. Um, it wasn't like the the kind of picture based just general random commentary that, that, that a lot of magazines have, have become now. This was like essays, it was sort of quite in-depth text, it was an educational magazine of the highest order. Um, and in this sort of special um, that they had here, published in 1973, it's uh, going through um, a, a number of, uh, talking about the, the, the exhibition of, of showing bonsai. Uh, and one thing that's very common uh, about the exhibitions and the texts and the, the, the idea today uh, is this idea of enjoyment. Okay, so there's words that get used quite a lot. One of the, the words being the one at the, the top there, Tanoshima. You know, bonsai is supposed to be an enjoy like showing bonsai particularly, is supposed to be an enjoyable um, sort of practice. Not that, you know, sort of larger bonsai isn't, um, but it's this kind of, this you know, this group activity the, the you know, a lot of people kind of get together. There were bonsai clubs, showing bonsai clubs were created. Uh, and it was something to be enjoyed and celebrated either by yourself or, or sort of collectively. Um, this would have been, uh, this was a, you know, a picture from that magazine and from that period. And this would have been like the, the highest level of, of kind of showing bonsai at the time. And so even in the, you know, in the early 70s, we're starting to see that type of really high quality tree, you know, this sort of exhibition, this sort of display here wouldn't look massively um, out of uh, place um, today. Okay, so this, this gentleman would be sort of considered to be one of the the, sort of the, the highest level of, of bonsai, but not everybody was at, was kind of at that level. And what we see is, uh, in this magazine and uh, in other texts as well, uh, are pictures from like the club show. So all of these little small clubs that are, you know, sort of dotted around the country. Um, had exhibitions and, and the pictures of them put up in the magazines and such like that and uh, it attracted a lot of people to, 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 to show him bonsai uh, and also the kind of like the the idea of displaying trees um, as a way of enjoying them so displaying them for yourself or you know as it you know this gentleman is doing here enjoying it by himself or as part of a uh, you know kind of like a, a larger sort of display you know a, a, a exhibition sort of a thing. Uh, and through this act of, of, of displaying, 
lot of experimentation uh, occurred um, and the ideas about how to, 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 to display show in bonsai started to really kind of like come into to practice. So some of the, um, uh, the, the experiments and, and things um, have were, were, were quite good. So, you know, this, this display here is nicely well balanced. Um, you know, if you put that out today, it wouldn't be massively embarrassing. Uh, you know, there's some sort of similarities in the heights of things like that, but it's, you know, it's a, it's a nice one, two, three, four, five point display. It's pretty, you know, well balanced and and uh, and organised, whereas this isn't. You know, so not all of the ideas about the um, the, the 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 displays are um, at that time, you know, a, a great idea. Uh, you know, just mishmashes of trees, and it's not just one or two. You know, there's a there's a lot of it kind of uh, sort of going on. Um, but from that kind of like chaotic way of, of of displaying it, and just people kind of just just doing it and having a go. Um, we start to see um, the good displays coming through, people learning about how to do it, learning that there's, you know, like ways to, to arrange trees in, in such a way to, to, to make it a, um, to, to, for there to be kind of like a narrative, for, for it to be an aesthetically a pleasing um, display, because, you know, frankly, that's not massively aesthetically pleasing. Um, whereas the, 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 the displays of, of you know, the, the modern day displays, you know, generally, and they, they they very much are, uh, and so this is some uh, some some pictures from that uh, 1973 uh, magazine of kind of like how to to kind of um, to to go through building and um, sort of showing displays and talking about the the relationships between all the different um, the items and things like that. Uh, and so there are tiny little differences. So you can see um, the the table on the table up at the top here to give that one height, you know, sort of positioning in you know different areas and and, and what kind of effect that has on on the um, on on, this, on the displays and such like, uh, so during this kind of period in the in the, in the sort of the seventies, we start to see, you know, like a, a real definite um, formulation of ideas. And so this is that mishmash of trees uh, in in the sort of the late sixties, early seventies, uh, and from that, the ideas sort of get formulated uh, down into into this uh, modern day. Um, Gafu 10 level, uh, Mame sort of size display. So it's not a massive uh, sort of time frame between those two, um, but you, you can sort of see where that sort of come from. It's literally within you know a, a generation or two of of, of of enthusiasts. And so what we also sort of tend to see um, going through into into sort of the the, the modern times uh, is a, a very much sort of change the sort of the style and the and the types of trees. Obviously, with show him, we are limited to a certain number of species that are ideally um, that will will grow in very sort of small environments and also will have the type of growth habit that is desirable for making a small size tree. So obviously, with that, we're looking for small size leaves. We're looking for small nodes. We're looking for sort of compact growth that's going to make the tree look. Uh, um, Sort of very big, and obviously over over time we sort of have seen this. Um, we've seen the uh, natural selection of of some of those species that have come through. Although, as I said at the, the you know the start of the um, in the nineteen thirties, a lot of those species that, that we're using then are still being used today. Uh, but previously, um, you know, so if we're going back to, to definitely to that nineteen thirty sort of period, uh, it was less emphasis was placed on getting this massive amount of, of ramification because they didn't have the techniques to do that. Less emphasis was placed on getting a massive thick trunk in a tiny little pot because they didn't have the the horticultural ability, the the the, the ideas, the, the the knowledge in order to, to sort of create that type of trunk for a for, for a start and then also maintain them. Uh, you know, so less emphasis was put, was was placed on this type type of um, uh, aspects of, of, of show him bonsai, and more was placed on the character and movement of the trunks. Uh, and so, for example, one very good example of this is the the literati show him. Uh, that's very sort of not often seen in, in modern exhibitions, but it was a little bit more kind of um, uh, commonplace uh, in the past. Uh, and so, one of the reasons why I've never really wanted to, to kind of like ever define the, the the sort of the size definition of of show him. Is that 
if you get your tape measure out then then quite often these sort of literati type shohin trees wouldn't necessarily fit within your 25 centimeter or 20 centimeter you know eight inches or whatever it is um defined um height limit okay so here we've got this one down here which is just a phenomenal looking tree it's not a great picture uh, but here's a, a closer picture uh a needle juniper phenomenal character it's very difficult to see um obviously but you know you could tell that that's a, a a real sort of tortured looking uh tree and it's a real thin trunk but it's got plenty of character okay so trees like this were relatively popular were were, were a little bit more kind of um seen uh this is a is a picture from uh, a book from the 1960s uh, which will come up again and i also posted this on on discord today and it was the, the thing on social media and what have you we finally got some rain outside i hope it's not making too much noise um uh but this is like one of my favorite ever uh, showing trees that i've ever seen a picture of obviously uh it's you know massively old uh in the text accompanying the the um uh in the in the book uh which is here no cover uh, <clears throat> uh it talks about the the history of the tree um and you know sort of just doing some of the calculations it, it kind of like goes on to to say it's probably around about 80 years old the bark on the tree on on the uh on the tree the movement the like everything about it is just phenomenal and the amount of character that gets packed into that uh tiny little um 11 centimeter that's all it is 11 centimeter to height uh is just incredible uh obviously alongside that the the, the pot that it's planted in uh and the stand that they're on again examples of just like truly beautiful pieces of ceramic and uh sort of you know, wood craftsmanship uh the pot is a an antique so this would be what's known as a koatari uh chinese pot so this is going back you know sort of 300 years or, or more uh and you know you just don't see them uh you didn't see them then you don't see them these days <clears throat> so you know modern show has, has sort of moved away from that because obviously trees get bigger <laughs> you can't stop them from growing uh and you know these are some of the, the examples of what we see as as being um sort of shohin today uh and the kind of the aesthetic and the idea with with a lot of these trees these are all pictures taken from uh a book which is known as miyabi um which is the the kind of the modern masterpieces of the shohin uh, bonsai world uh both there's both pots and trees uh contained within and these are just basically trying to sort of fit as much as they can within a pot so you can see the, like the nubari of this is just really forcing it's you know it's it's really sort of tight in the pot there uh and trying to get a, you know a bigger sort of thicker trunk on on, on as possible uh and so that's kind of like how sort of a lot of not all but how you know the the modern sort of showing kind of aesthetic has come into being because people have got better at growing trees people the techniques have improved and trees get bigger you know it's very difficult to keep something that small for that long it's very very difficult which is what makes it so special um whereas it's a little bit easier no, it's not that easy, but it's a little bit easier to to to, to grow these and, and get them sort of bigger. But one of the things that uh, that we still sort of see today um, with sort of Shohin bonsai, uh, although the trees may be getting a little bit bigger, <coughs> is this idea of of playfulness and the enjoyment of of Shohin bonsai. Uh, so I'm not going to dwell on on modern uh, trees and such like too much, um, but the, the 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 playfulness and the a um, the enjoyment aspect of, of showing bonsai is still a uh, problem even today even at the highest level you know the, the gaffer uh, and this is um uh, some pictures that mark and rita cooper who are big showing enthusiasts from the uk um, have uh, arguably the some of the the, the better trees in europe um, and they travel to japan um, at least at least once a year in, in november and spend a lot of time in the show world uh they took these photographs and they are some very sort of playful uh images of from a from an autumn exhibition uh of this uh this little figurine here trying to uh to, to knock down some of the the princess persimmon 
Um, and a lot of people will kind of like look at this and think of it as being a bit kind of like kitsch. Some people said about it on uh, on the Discord forum about it being kind of like akin to Mud Men. But this is the, the again, this, this is a, a real sort of important thread that runs through uh, show him bonsai is that kind of the, the playfulness of it. and you see it at, you know in the the figures that get, kind of get used this is a picture from uh, the gaffer 10 last year um, that i stole off of uh, bonsai tonight uh jonas's website so thank you very much jonas i was uh, scavenging these earlier uh he has a lot of very good pictures and information about um uh show him bonsai and stuff on there so you can you know, sort of go through there and he, uh, he's got some very interesting um descriptions about you know the, the modern day uh, sort of display aesthetics and things like that which is again one of the reasons why there's no point just re repeating it uh but this hit this uh, little figure down here uh is the the god of plenty uh ebis you can see him kind of like this is his rice sack this is his big fat belly uh you know he's he's he's, he's the god of plenty uh and so obviously sort of displayed in front of this um malice sea bold eye the decorative crab apple uh, which is full of fruit, uh, is a kind of like a, a, a nice kind of like playful image there. You still see a lot of these kind of creative displays. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. Uh, but the Shohin Bonsai is a world where this is encouraged, allowed, uh, and actively kind of practiced, whereas you would never see anything like this um, in the larger bonsai world. It, you know, people who try and do this. Um, kind of a, a get not shot down so much, but it's not. It wouldn't. You would ever, wouldn't ever sort of see anything like this at, at the cockpit. Whereas at the gaff return, the highest level of the showing world, this is you know actively encouraged. Uh, and so obviously you can sort of feel the wind, which is what it says up here, <coughs> uh, the big wind up in the in the in the, in the heavens, uh, sort of uh, message. But you can sort of see again the the, the rules of display just don't really sort of tend to, to, to exist in the same way that a lot of people sort of tend to sort of think of them as, as being you either like it or you don't um, but it's it's a, it's a definitely kind of like a, a part of the the show him bonsai and display aesthetic even today so these are um, again these are sort of modern day thank you very much for, for Mark and Rick for these photographs uh, and exhibition uh, exhibits from the last couple of years and you can still sort of see that kind of um pack them in type of mentality with some of the the, the exhibitions so it's not a commonly done thing this would may, maybe sort of um take up say five to ten percent of, of of exhibits but it's not laughed at it's not ridiculed it's not shunned uh and it's you know it's definitely kind of like harking back to to, to previous aesthetic ideas that, that have come from from the show him world this is one of the few um kind of uh, tall shohin so this is a, a, a literati camellia i don't know exactly how tall that is but i would be guessing that's probably close to say sort of 50 centimeters but because of the thinness of the trunk it has that sort of shohin feel and so like this obsession with with the height and such like is relatively kind of like a a, a modern thing it's more kind of like a i would say like a a feeling if it feels like a shohin if it fits in with that multiple tree type of, of display then it's all good i put a picture up on my instagram of a tree of the same sort of height on it on its side it was only 15 centimeters tall but it was you know 80 centimeters long you know technically if you go by the, those the, the that height definition that would that would classify as a show in but it isn't okay so it's all about a, a sort of a sense of feel and this is one of the areas where kind of like japanese bonds show in bonsai is out at the moment because a lot of those trees that they have are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and they're getting past that kind of like 25 centimeter height limit which is kind of a, a practical limit in terms of the the way in which they, they get displayed and so they're kind of like at this cr crossroads like do they make things bigger or do they push that into a completely different category uh, and then just sort of go backwards uh, a step at the moment? So, um, you know, like this is the, the the kind of like the height limit of, of of a lot of those trees. Now, we once you, you, you once the trees start getting a little bit bigger and bigger, it's difficult to fit them in the racks uh, unless the racks start getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so, you know, there are different sort of rack sizes uh, within the within the, the the modern sort of display aesthetic and the modern sort of ways of of, of exhibiting uh and so 
the, the, the difficulty now is to try and kind of find a path forward with the, the sizes of the trees uh, and you know come up with new ways of, of exhibiting some of these larger trees uh, and so you know the, the evolution of the, the, the aesthetic has always happened from the 30s onwards uh, and it's still sort of happening today and one of the things that we're sort of starting to see a little bit more of and this is the type of display that I really kind of uh, I would gravitate towards a little bit more than say some of these rack displays whereas these are you know really kind of impressive and the, the way in which these are you know, sort of designed to be as I said there's information out there you know but the, the, there's, there's a great kind of importance on the variation of, of, of shapes species pots all of this kind of stuff if you look at you know sort of the great detail of this there's not there's nothing there that kind of gets repeated, which is why this is, uh, you know, a prize winning display. However, with those slightly larger trees, the only kind of way to, to, to kind of get around using them and, and still ha having them as, you know, with aesthetic values to kind of move into this uh, sort of two or three tree um, sort of display method. Uh, and so this is kind of, um, I think is going to be uh, a little bit more prominent within the within the Japanese show in bonsai world and I think as well is something that people in the west could really kind of look at as a way of enjoying and, uh, and displaying um, sort of show in bonsai so uh, we, we're running on this is going to end up being you know past midnight if we're not careful uh, but as I said one of the important things that's kind of really gone through uh, all of sort of show in bonsai um, from the start to, the, to, to today is this appreciation of the small pots and there are people who are just collectors of these uh, of the pots themselves and maybe don't actually do um, too much of the, the trees <clears throat> and with Shohin Bonsai there's a lot more experimentation there's a lot more <clears throat> uh, sort of different sort of styles uh, shapes, colours uh, and, and things and you see a lot of painted pots a lot of different glazes um, this is a Masterpiece pot uh, by Tofukuji. This is, uh, you know, there are a lot of kind of very famous potters. Tofukuji, Kozan, uh, I try to think of other, Takimo, um, Takimoto. There is, there's loads of them. There's, there's loads of books and stuff about them. Uh, I can't remember where I put my books over there. Uh, and there are, you know, people who get obsessive uh, collectors about them. And this is always sort of carried through. Uh, and so you look at this. This is a picture from uh, a Nakamura Zeiko book, which we'll talk, we'll look at again. Uh, and this is one of my favourite pictures from that book because it is just a dandelion, uh, which is being displayed in an antique Chinese pot. Uh, and so that kind of the, the use and the appreciation of the ceramic vessel as an integral part of the display is much more kind of apparent with the with the showing world than it perhaps is with the, the 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 larger trees where things tend to be kind of a little bit more sort of subdued. So. There are, as I said, there are a lot of people who kind of um, who who sort of specialise in just collecting pots. Um, they may have no interest in, in bonsai whatsoever. We had uh, one enthusiast um, who was a retired uh, head teacher um, at, at Mr Kobayashi's garden. He didn't have any trees, but he just had the the most phenomenal uh, collection of, of of small pots. Um, and there is a part of the showroom world where. Just the enjoyment of the ceramic vessel in 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 and of itself is is a kind of an important part. And at the the, the exhibitions themselves, you will see just the occasional um, exhibit of of the pots themselves. Uh, and these famous pots, some of them will, will change hands for, for for phenomenal amounts of money. Um, and a lot of them now are actually tend, um, beginning to, to to go abroad, particularly to um, uh, Taiwan and uh, and America. There are a number of of, of large kind of collections that are beginning to be amassed um, in, in various different places because people just kind of get into this it really appeals to that kind of collector mentality uh, and people want to get the best examples the the rarest uh, you know sort of pieces because these are just in and of themselves are phenomenally beautiful works uh, there's one book which um, was published I think it was in the uh, I'm not going to make a guess but sort of late 70s maybe early 80s I should have it and I should should know, um, but uh, it's the the interesting character of small bonsai pots, and this was a this is quite a hard to get book, um, and this was the for the collection from uh, this guy, and a lot of those pots have subsequently featured in other collections, uh, and so he was this, you know these early collectors would have been around sort of commissioning pots from from a lot of these potters themselves and buying direct from those potters. 
um, and sort of keeping the uh, the ceramic world, you know, keeping those people making the pots. And so that again, that relationship between the enthusiast and the professional, again, that kind of all sort of merges together. Um, so here's just you know some of the pictures. Uh, a lot, some of these are antique Chinese. Uh, others are more at the time more modern um sort of japanese uh, painted pots and such like uh this is a, a very old chinese pot um which mr kobe actually still has uh in his collection um and again this wouldn't have necessarily been built as a you know done as a a, a shohin bonsai pot but it was sort of maybe repurposed um for for for, for using with shohin bonsai uh, and the, the the gentleman who had it at the time, um, one of the things that he did was, even though this this pot was worth you know tens, hundreds of thousands of pounds, euros, dollars, uh, he was growing bamboo in it out in the garden. And in the book, there's pictures of this happening uh, in order to sort of build up some of that patina. So he built this kind of like um, cage around it, this wooden cage around it, so that it wouldn't um, uh, become damaged. Uh, but was actively kind of trying to, to to build up the patina on the on the on the top there. Uh, so Mr. Kobe still has this in in his collection. It was one of the pots that uh, I had the privilege of of looking at on a regular basis, um, including this one as well. Um, and that same pot uh, then goes on to to to, to feature in um, another uh, collector's uh, anthology, so to speak. So these these pots. Um, terrible spelling mistake there, uh, have, um, what's the word I'm looking for, provenance, and you can sort of see them being displayed um, and see them uh, going through different uh, collections throughout history. Uh, the, the, the book we saw there is the, the Miyabi book that I showed earlier, um, and this is, you know, there's a registration, there's a lot of the, the, the any, any of the pots that get featured in this book. Uh, are then kind of registered as masterpieces. So this is a phenomenal book to, to kind of look at to, to see some of those masterpiece uh, pots that we see in there. Okay, so there we go. So these are some of those. Uh, you know, and some of these would have been uh, 150 years old, 100 years old. Uh, this is uh, and uh, again um, it says at the bottom there antique Chinese pots. This is a Kowatari pot super rare to have to find anything that's uh of show insights and so these are real kind of um rare masterpieces okay so that one that that thread um the important kind of aspect of of, of showing is, is still around today and was was there from the start and one of the the, the people that was was influential with that and we're going to look at the two biggest um people who influenced uh, Shohin Bonsai are uh, this guy uh, Matsudaira uh, and then Nakamura Zeko, which we've looked at some of his pictures all right there. And both of them really sort of popularized Shohin and pushed the art forward. Um, so we'll kind of skip through a little bit of this, or you know, we'll, we'll go into, into too much detail. But uh, Matsudaira was basically uh, an aristocrat from just after the the the, um, the Meiji Revolution. So 1868, Japan went from being a, a feudal uh, society to to being a little bit less feudal, a little bit more democratic. Um, and at that sort of time in Shikoku, um, bonsai cultivation was starting to, to, to sort of take root uh, and starting to happen. So Shikoku is one of the four islands where um, the the bonsai farms are. Uh, so it's something that sort of started to, to, to happen there. Uh, and the Matsudaira clan were from that area and they, had, they owned massive amounts of, of, of land around uh, Kagawa. Uh, which is where the, the you know the, that bonsai sort of farming is really sort of centralised, uh, and although he was built uh, the the Yorinaga Matsudaira is the family name Yorinaga is his given name, although he was born after you know the the abolition of um, the aristocratic uh, feudal system, uh, he was still very much you know they, they were landowners that he was upper class he was a, a a very sort of successful politician he did a lot of good. Uh, in both kind of like education um, and health reforms in the in the kind of the 1920s and stuff like that, uh, and he really enjoyed bonsai. Obviously, he, he grew up in and around a you know bonsai producing area, uh, and he did it as a as a hobby. And it was a pastime that he shared with his wife. And there's a, a real famous book that was um, uh, released in the late 70s, I believe, um, 
uh, about his collection. Uh, he passed away obviously in 1944, but his wife uh, um, continued to, 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 you know, she followed on uh, and continued with the um, uh, the, the the bonsai, uh, the Shohin bonsai collection. Uh, and this is her back in the day. Uh, this was them packing up their, as we sort of mentioned, packing up their trees uh, to take to Tokyo um, in, in their sort of special little um, containers there. Uh, this is her just before she passed away uh, and the, the sort of the remnants of their collection in um, uh, Atami, which is just outside of, of, um, of Tokyo, where all of the trees kind of got moved uh, to uh, during the war. Uh, because they, they got damaged, obviously. Uh, but he was an enthusiast that, obviously, he grew up in and around bonsai um, and started to, you know, in the text and stuff around it, he, sort of, uh, he, he started to collect them from the age of uh, 19, but didn't really take it seriously until 1923 when there was a massive earthquake in and around Tokyo. This was the um, the pivotal kind of point for the formation of the, the Omiya bonsai village, and obviously he became part of that. Uh, and he was a, uh, a kind of a leading patron of a lot of those nurseries, um, both uh, in and around Tokyo and back in his in, in his home area. And so he, he he was supporting these nurseries, he was allowing them to kind of like function. Uh, and his his collection, as a result, obviously sort of grew um, bigger and bigger and bigger. And it wasn't just the, as I said, it wasn't just the the, the bonsai professionals themselves. Um, that he was helping to spot, but also the potters. And so he had a, a close relationship with um, some of the, the famous potters, Takemoto, uh, I think was one of them, and um, he was commissioning a lot of pots. Uh, obviously, sort of going forward from, from there, the, the Kokofuten and the, the national associations that were sort of starting to, to come into being, um, he was sort of pivotal in their creation, uh, and he was chairman, he, he was like the honorary chairman from, from the Kokofu kind of uh, their group and uh, their association that they made uh, until he died in 1944 as I said uh, during the war a lot of his trees got moved out uh, to um, the, the their summer house as it were uh, out in Atami which is on the coast um, about an hour and a bit out of Tokyo by bullet train uh, so these are the you know the pictures from the from the book that was made uh, and you see all of, all of these pots again these are the super famous pots that were still being used um, and they are kind of, um, you know, a lot of these pots would be worth, excuse me, even at that time, you know, several thousands, uh, tens of thousands of pounds, dollars, whatever you, you can count it in, it's still a lot of money. Uh, but they were being used and uh, the, the bamboo pegs were there to, to stop things from being blown over and knocked over um, to keep them. Uh, and when you look through the, through, through the book, um, which is a, a very beautiful book, um, piece of literature uh, and some great photography and this was kind of like uh you know sort of made in the um in the kind of like the, the heyday the, the boom period of, of uh um japanese kind of uh bonsai and publishing and stuff like that uh the, the the pictures and the idea that you sort of see is that this again that that the age and the character are, are revered rather than this incredible kind of uh, technical um ability with the with the trees and making like phenomenal kind of amounts of um ramification and you will see some of those trees you know there, there's a progression from the kokafu in 1934 back up until the 70s uh and such like and so the the, the age and the, the the character uh is very much a, a, an important um aspect and so we've got this uh phenomenal um hawthorn a picture of which came up previously um, I should have them both sort of together. Um, but yes, incredible character uh, uh, and age within, within the trunk. This is what the, you know, that older generation of uh, of Shohin enthusiasts really um, looked for. Uh, this is a um, 12 centimetre tall uh, prunus uh, cherry tree, over 30 years old incredibly compact and this age and character uh, that you can sort of see within the within the, the trunk and this beautiful pot uh, so things from the uh, from the Matsudaira collection um, you know by modern standards you would look at them and, and not be massively impressed by their um, by their structure by their shape by the amount of ramification that they have but it's that character that's that's, that's, that's kind of integral to them which has come through tens 20 
30, 40, 50 years of struggling within a tiny little pot. These haven't been put into big containers and grown to, to be massive. They've been struggling in these tiny little containers, um, barely growing every every sort of single time, uh, every year. So, uh, the part of his collection, uh, all these uh, tiny little pots, it's obviously he was a you know massive pot collector. His, his wife kept them all, uh, and they were showing size books, Suiseki vases and things like this. And if you can see there, it's like 2.8. These books are 2.8 centimeters by three centimeters. You know these are things that were used uh, in displays and such like these tiny scrolls uh, that were used. He had an unhealthy kind of um, obsession with uh, with tiny little things, um, <clears throat> and so. You know, these uh, mini sort of tokenomas were, you know, again, part of his collection, part of that idea, um, the screens that were used for, for, for displaying there. Um, so it's a, it's a slightly different world to um, to, to that big rack uh, type of displays that we see today. As I said, this is, you know, quite a sort of a historical document rather than uh, anything modern. Uh, so these, uh, obviously these items, many of them are still uh, in, in use today. Uh, so there's the man himself, um, bathing in his, uh, you know, enjoying his collection there. Uh, so there. Uh, so yeah, he was one of the the, the big kind of um, influences. And then the the, the second one uh, was this gentleman called uh, Nakamura Zeko, who was a super famous person in the 60s. Uh, he was an actor. He was on TV all the time. He was a kabuki star, sang opera, uh, and he was uh, a big uh, bonsai enthusiast in the early 60s. Um, he had been practicing bonsai for a long time. He published a lot of books, uh, and he used his position to kind of popularize uh, show him. There he is, um, and there's a really great picture of him smoking a bag uh, in 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 the book. Uh, there it is. I should have had that up. So I bet he was a, a an interesting bloke to sit down and have a chat with uh, about trees. Um, but you can still still see that even in the in that sort of 60s um, sort of period. Uh, that aesthetic, that idea is still around um, and we haven't made that jump up to um, to the to the bigger and thicker trees just yet. So small the, the, the trees are generally a, lot, a little bit smaller. the age and the character is, is kind of like given as um, uh, oh sorry just lost something there. we're still on. yep so the age and the character is still uh, it, you know sort of one of the, the, the sort of focal points but again the, the the importance of these high quality pots this you know it's sort of tofukuji pots antique chinese pots that we sort of see here you know these are pictures, some of the pictures from uh from his uh from his little book uh, and a lot of the things that you see in there might not necessarily be like incredibly uh phenomenal compared to, to modern day standards um uh including something uh kind of like this but uh the, the it, it's difficult to kind of like get a sense of the the, the character that that um that is contained within a lot of those trees from photographs and without sort of seeing them in person because this is kind of like harking back to that kind of uh the the, the mochikomi type of idea of uh you know of, of bonsai that the, the the character that gets developed from from the years and years and years of um I don't want to say tortured, but that, that kind of cultivation in, in very, sort of a very sort of harsh and small environment. Um, so, I've managed to actually pretty much, I think this is the end of the talk, it might be. Uh, I don't know if I did do it any more afterwards, yeah. Uh, so that's that's basically pretty much it. Uh, so that's kind of like just a, an introduction to um, kind of like the evolution of, of, of Shohin Bonsai. Um, from 1934 to 2011 that's when i first made this this <laughs> the uh the um the, the talk so i should update that 2020 um so in a relatively short period of time we see this massive kind of improvement of of, of showing bots and you know to, to be fair that that also does happen with the uh with the larger um trees uh, so that's pretty much kind of like it in terms of looking at the, the, the history and things like that. Um, if anybody has any sort of questions about what we've uh, been talking about, just put them up in the chat um, for me to answer. Um, but pretty much I think it's most of it's sort of self-explanatory. Uh, and there will be a possibility of kind of like going into that modern day um, kind of 
uh, the rack type of display and looking at you know some of the important aspects of those types of um, uh, exhibits as we, as we know but as with anything <coughs> as with looking at the Satsuki streams and stuff like that it's very important to understand where things come from because if you don't understand where they come from uh, and like the fundamental kind of threads the, the important aspect to them then it's difficult to, to kind of really get a, a deeper an understanding of what's happening today so the one thing that I think I, I want people to to really kind of uh, understand and, and appreciate f about Shohin Bonsai is that it's a world unto itself and so looking at the aesthetics of larger trees looking at the aesthetics of Satsuki and trying to apply those to Shohin is not the best way to, to approach it it has a very important aspect of it is that enjoyment aspect of it being playful it gives you such mu uh, a wider um, opportunity a, you know it's a bigger canvas to, to play around when you've got multiple trees within uh, a display it gives you a lot more kind of uh, freedom to, to, to kind of create a, a narrative within a within a a small space the 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 one sort of uh flip side to that is the uh let's go back to this you know when you have that oh i'm on the wrong mouse when you have this this, this rack type of um display there isn't as much kind of i don't want to say this in a negative way but there isn't as much imagination that you can put into it whereas with the um with the sort of the larger type of displays, you know, of trees or the you know the say the two type, the two tree tree displays, the uh, there's a lot more that can be can be left to the, the imagination of the viewer with that type of rack display and, and that is it's about the details that are important rather than this kind of overall grand aesthetic um, artistic statement or anything like that if that makes sense. So. I don't think anybody's really asked any questions. I've managed to keep it at an hour, which for me, I think is pretty phenomenal. Um, so, uh, that went relatively well. A lot easier doing it when there's nobody in front of you than it is doing it in front of um, uh, a massive group of, of, of people. Uh, so I hope it was of interest to, to everybody. Uh, and it, there are, I've got a number of different uh, sort of presentations and stuff that will come up. I did give people the opportunity to have uh, Suiseki or Shohin uh, display talking about that in the um, uh, in the Discord group, and I'd say ninety five percent of people wanted Shohin. So uh, we will get on to talking about Suiseki maybe in July um, because uh, uh, there's not a lot to do then, <laughs> so uh, it's a lot easier to, to sort of talk about that. Um, Su Suiseki is something I'm very very much um, Kind of passionate about uh, and I, w I do want to talk about it with people so those people who are expecting that it will come up uh, and there's a number of other um, uh, presentations that I've got which I will uh, bring up uh, in the future <coughs> so um, uh, the discord group uh, max is something which is available to uh, those people who uh, donate so obviously these uh, live streams are free um, and putting them out there basically it started off to, um, for, to help people get kind of get through lockdown to help me get through lockdown keep me sane uh, but essentially they're free if you have found this useful uh, then I'm putting the donate uh, thing up now uh, or it's on the link underneath um, so if you if you if you want to to say thank you for for all of this then uh, then please uh, send some money and if you do become a donor and um, then you get a, a link to the the, the discord group where people lots of uh, information gets shared peer-to-peer -peer as well as me um, putting my um, giving advice and, and, and putting in information as and where I can so do I like Shohin yes I do uh, Jeremy uh, I would say my personal preference goes towards um, character and literati and the uh, the two 3T uh, type displays, personally, because I don't have a lot of trees. Um, but I can appreciate the, 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 the incredible work that goes into those those multi-tree uh, displays. 
Uh, I would say the one thing that I do really uh, focus on is the, the ceramics as well. Uh, because when I was first as an apprentice, the uh, there was still a massive boom in um, Japanese uh, small pots. Uh, Mr. Kobayashi, my master, the chief, he had some of the greatest uh, small pots uh, around. So if you have a copy of his pot book, there's some phenomenal pots in there. And I got to hold them and touch them and see how, how glorious they were as, as beautiful works of art. And so I would say that's where my uh, passion lies mainly within the Shohin Bonsai world. So, um, <clears throat> I think the only thing, other thing to say is that there's not going to be a stream uh, on Saturday because I will be away uh, and I will come up with some stuff to talk about uh, on Tuesday, uh, I think. Uh, it'll be, I don't know, I've got some uh, some videos. Uh, I don't know if, you, if, you, if anybody spotted uh, but this is the, uh, the Hoshi no, not Hoshi no Kage, the um, the Hanabin from one of the previous uh, streams, uh, which has been potted up, and I did make a, uh, some videos of that, uh, but obviously, you know, as I said at the start, there's no time to kind of edit them and things like that. So I will put those uh, videos together and maybe make another Satsuki stream, or I'll just put those up as videos for the donors. Uh, but yes, I will not see you this uh, for the rest of the week, but uh, at some point on uh, next week. So the only thing uh, left to say is thank you very much for, for sitting through this. Uh, people seem to, to have enjoyed it. Uh, and this stream has been brought to you in association with Theakston's Old Peculiar. Uh, because the trees that I like are both old and peculiar. Uh, so cheers. Thanks for turning up. Uh,